So with this deal structure, I'm going to simplify it into three different paths, option one, two, and three. Now, again, these I would say are the common paths. There is, you know, a hundred different things you could do. You can ultimately structure this however you like, but my objective for this call is to make it simple. My objective is to be like, oh, I can look at this deal. Here's my numbers and say, well, yeah, it makes the most sense to do option one, or this makes most sense to do option two or option three, right? You can take these as a kind of template and then tweak them as you like. And um, really, I want to make it, I want to make it simple is really my objective here. I don't think this is very complicated. If you are talking about the context of raising money on an SBA 7A, you only get so many options here, right? I really think these are your three main options. If you're going, you know, raising money on debt, I mean, you could structure it 20 different ways, right? There's too many options there that can get confusing. If we're, so in this context, I think it's actually very, very simple. And that's the message I want to hear, or I want to, um, I want you to hear it is simple. So let's talk about these three different paths and really option one and two are going one direction with the fork in the road, not personally guaranteeing. And option three is personally guaranteeing. So we'll talk through what that looks like. And if we start with option one, right, it's, it's commonly, I wrote here, you know, 10 to 19%. You could obviously offer someone less than 10%. You could offer them three or four or 5%. It's like, ah, is that, is that really even worth it? Right? Like we're talking about a big deal here with lots of, of numbers that are really strong. You know, um, if, if you needed to raise 50 grand or a hundred grand, uh, you know, perhaps, perhaps you're, you know, 10%, maybe it's 5%, but it's like, as you know, I would just consider from this perspective, you, you probably don't want to raise money at like 3% like of equity. It's just like, it's not even worth someone's time. So this is why I put it in this example of nine to uh, 10 to 19, but obviously you could do 9%, you could do FI percent, whatever you like. But option one here, this is, you're trying to, you're trying to find one investor, one person, right? Um, that can lend you you know, hundred grand to, to 400 grand. And that's kind of an example that I use of a capital raise one to 400 grand. I mean, it could obviously be 50 grand. If you only needed 50 grand and you had a number, you know, from the bank, Hey, I need to raise 400 grand total. And I have 350. Well, I don't know. Do you just, is, is 50 grand even worth it? Do you just save 50 grand real quick? Or do you like, you know, just say, Hey, I want to borrow hundred grand instead, right? Like those are decisions for you to make. Um, but I would just make it worth it for the investor, right? If you, if you're like, oh, I only need 50 grand and we pencil everything out and yeah, it's, it's 3%. You're like, oh, well, I mean, I don't want to do a deal for 3%. That's not worth the time. Right? So consider from that perspective, hundred to 400, it can be higher. It can be lower, but I think that's a nice way to kind of put this in context or an example that on, you know, 10 to 19%, somewhere in there, I can probably raise you know, 100,000 for sure. Maybe that's closer to the 10% side or maybe 400,000. Perhaps that 400,000 is closer to the 19, 19% side, right? Somewhere in there. I think that's very comfortable as we are looking at the cash flow, as the ROI, as we're putting this whole deal together, um, that you can pull those numbers back and say, okay, well, let's take a percentage. Let's take a, a cash on cash return. Let's, what, what is our exit strategy? All these things that we'll talk through in a few but putting it back into an example here. Okay. I need this much money. Here's what my deal spits off at that percentage. They would be getting this much in return, which is a huge deal for them. It's a great ROI, right? Like that fits in best in box number one, right? Like I'm going to try and look for one investor to raise 100 to 400,000 or the second option, option two, right? You want to raise maybe a smidge more money. Maybe it's Again, it could be it could be less, but maybe it's four hundred to six hundred thousand, and you're like, well, I I, I want to raise, let's say, five hundred grand. I want to raise five hundred thousand, and you know, I, I'm having trouble finding one investor to come up with five hundred grand because if if I wanted to raise five hundred grand, they want more than nineteen percent, but they don't want to personally guarantee. So, and we don't want to talk about box three yet, right? We want to talk about box two of this example. Oh, see, so perhaps maybe instead of this five hundred grand, maybe I raise money at 250 and 250 and perhaps that's like 12% and 12% or 10 and 10 or 15 and 15 you can you can figure out all these numbers but i think it's kind of simple in that perspective and again you can go and raise okay 100 from this person 50 from this person uh 75 from this person i personally think that's a harder path that's more 
things you have to juggle, I think the less investors, the better. There is kind of a balance there because again, if you said, hey, you know, you had a commitment from this investor and you had, you know, just say even one investor, right? And they backed out at the last minute, then it's like, well, crap, now I have no money, right? Like I raised this money and it didn't show up. Um, so that's a different call talking about maybe putting that money in escrow ahead of time and things like that. But I think simplicity is, is really my goal and my objective. If I can have two investors instead of three or five, I think that would clearly be easier. And if I needed to raise this amount of money, right? I know I can raise you know, on one investor easily one to 300,000, right? Based on these deal structures, I can raise one to 300,000. I can find people like that. If I need to raise 400,000, perhaps I need to split and go 200,000 here, 200,000 here, right? But then also consider my skin in the game. How much money am I putting into it? How much can I put into it? And I do think you should put some money into it. So that's what option two looks like, right? You can be, okay, you know, I, I even wrote 5% to 19%. Maybe you're getting, you know, hey, you, you wanted to raise 500 grand and this person here has 400 grand, right? So maybe they're getting, you know, 19%. And perhaps you need to raise an extra 100,000. Perhaps that person's getting like 7%. You can, honestly, you can structure in, in these kind of ways. And again, the objective is like, hey, let's start with three simple boxes and you can kind of tweak it from there. So our third path is going the other side of the tree here, the fork in the road. You have to personally guarantee because in order to raise the amount of capital that you need, it equates to you know, I need more than 20%, right? So you perhaps it's it's 25% or 33% or 50% and you need to raise not 200 grand or 400 grand, perhaps it's, um, you know, 500,000, perhaps it's over a million dollars, right? My, my project here, I raised 1.3 million on the front side. I was definitely on path three and we can talk more through that example. But from that perspective, okay, if you are going to have to, find an investor that needs to sign on that dotted line, that needs to personally guarantee this thing, they're gonna need a bigger win, right? And for them to get a bigger um, win, uh, I mean, it, it does require more risk. So you have to find this balance there. They are signing on the dotted line, they are taking on more risk, they are gonna need a higher percentage of the, the real estate and the cash flow from the operations company.